What's up guys, in this video we are back again with the gun I made inside the other tutorial which if you haven't watched yet you can go ahead and watch that right here in the top right. However if you have already watched that and you already have a working gun then you can go ahead and follow along with this tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to be making it so that the gun will fire a projectile instead of shooting out an invisible line. And we're going to do a few more cosmetic things. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is open up your gun inside the workspace. And then we're going to click on the big plus icon to the right of the gun. And we're going to insert a brand new folder right here. We're going to just name this to bullets because that's where all the bullets are going to be held. And let's go ahead and open up our local script right here. So all that we need to do here is underneath our little reload function, we just want to create a new comment as all the other ones have. And this is going to be called create bullet. And we're going to create a local function that's going to be called create bullet with parentheses on the end. And then we're going to say local bullet will be equal to instance.new. And this is going to be a brand new part. And then we're going to just change bullet.cframe will be equal to cframe.new. This will take our tool variable that we have. Then we're going to choose the handle of that tool. Then that handles position. Then we're going to do comma mouse.origin.position and that will go ahead and create the new cframe for our bullet. Then we change the name of the bullet over to bullet. We can say bullet.size will be equal to the capital V here, vector3.new, and this is going to be a 1, 1, 1. I'll explain what I'm going to do right afterwards, but what we're doing here in a simple stance is that we're customizing all of the projectiles that we're going to be shooting. We want to make sure all of the properties are set correctly, so you can change any of these after we're done to match better with what you're thinking of. After that, we just simply change the bullet.brick color will be equal to brick color dot new, and I'm going to choose a nice color like 220 or so maybe 226. Each one of these different values has a number to it. Otherwise, you can just use quotation marks and just choose a color that you want to. I'm gonna go with a nice bronze. And we say bullet dot can collide equals to false. Then bullet a capital B dot transparency will be equal to zero. Bullet dot bottom surface will be equal to zero and bullet dot top surface will be equal to zero. This top and bottom surface thing determines the Y value for the face. So I was getting the top face and the bottom face. And that is everything that we need to for the bullet. However, now we need to create the shell for the bullet as well. So we're going to say local shell mesh will be equal to instance dot new. And this will be a special mesh. We're going to do shell mesh dot scale will be equal to vector 3 dot new 0.15 comma 0.4 and then comma 0.15 once again this will get a very nice rectangular shape almost but the special mesh will give it a rounded look so it'll look more like a bullet instead of just a part flying through the air then we simply parent the shell mesh over to the bullet itself here and now that's it for the shell and you say local body velocity will be equal to instance dot new body velocity and we change our body velocity dot max force will be equal to vector 3 dot new math dot huge comma math dot huge comma math dot huge all three axes and we say body velocity dot p equals to math dot huge so we're using a lot of math dot huge and we say body velocity dot velocity equals to mouse dot unit ray which is a ray directed towards the mouse's world position which originates from the camera's world position Position, and then dot direction times 300 like a raycast once again we change the bullet dot parent equal to our workspace or game dot workspace and then we do our body velocity dot parent will be equal to our bullet and then we say game dot debris colon add item and then we're going to choose our bullet comma and then three seconds as to when it should go away just like this 
So how this is working is up here we're creating a brand new bullet where we set all of the properties of it. After that we create a brand new shell mesh which will go inside of our bullet to change how it looks. But then the body velocity is the thing that will go ahead and make it go towards our object which is where our mouse's direction is. And this dot P determines how aggressive the force of the velocity is going to be. And then up here we make sure everything is parented correctly and then we get rid of the bullet after three seconds. So now down here inside of our tool.activated connect function, let's go right under fire server and we're just going to call our create bullet function. That's everything that we need to do for our local script. Let's go over to our normal script. So with inside of our script, let's start off on the top getting our bullets folder. This will be equal to our script.parent find first child and then our bullets folder and then we create a brand new function called create bullet and this is going to take our bullet position which we'll get into later and we can copy a lot of stuff over from our local script like most of this bullet we can just paste this in and then we're gonna parent the bullet over here to our bullets folder inside of this right here and instead of saying this cframe.new we can just say cframe equals to our bullet position I want to make sure that bullet is dot anchored is equal to true change bullet dot form factor equals to enum dot form factor dot custom instead of bullet dot size being as big as it is right now instead of one we're going to do 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 like that instead of having bronze as the brick color right here i'm going to change this to gun metallic i'm also going to add another line right here we're going to say bullet dot shape will be equal to enum dot part type dot block and instead of all these bottom and top surfaces equaling to zero we're going to say they equal to enum dot surface type and this is going to be dot smooth and we can copy this and paste it as well right here after that we simply say game dot debris colon add item and this is going to be our bullet comma and then we're going to do about 10 seconds or you can change that to whatever you want to be that'll just be however long it takes for it to be removed and now here's a painful part of this process that we need to do all of that over again but this time for a shell and this isn't the shell mesh this is the actual shell for the bullet so we say instance dot new and this will be a part or quotation marks comma and then we're going to parent it over to our bullets folder We change our shell dot c frame equal to our tool dot handle dot c frame times our c frame dot from Euler angles x y z 1.5 comma 0 comma 0 choose shell dot size will be equal to vector 3 dot new 1 comma 1 comma 1 we're going to choose shell dot brick color will be equal to brick color dot new. I'm going to choose that same bronze as before. I'm going to choose shell dot can collide will be equal to false. Shell dot bottom surface will be equal to zero. Shell dot top surface will also be equal to zero. Shell dot name will be equal to quotation marks. Then we're going to say shell dot velocity will be equal to tool dot handle dot c frame dot look vector times 35 plus vector 3 dot new and i do math dot random minus 10 and comma 10 so this will get a number between negative 10 and 10 degrees for our random angle we're gonna do 20 for the y and then math dot random on the z except we're gonna choose a minimum of negative 10 and a maximum of 20. so that'll get those certain angles we're gonna do shell dot rot velocity or rotation velocity will be equal to vector 3 dot new I'm going to do 0 comma 200 comma 0 after that we say game dot debris colon add item and then we do shell comma 1 because we only want it to last about a second or so next let's go back over to our local script here and copy this shell mesh because it's the exact same thing and we just go down right here and say this 
except instead of having the parent be the bullet, we simply say the shell instead. Next, inside of our raycast function inside of our normal script, we go below our raycast result and we check if raycast result dot position, then we say create bullet and this will take our raycast result dot position as the bullet position parameter that we had up here inside of our function. So let's click play and see what happens. Let's go ahead and pick up our gun here and let's see. So as you can see we have the shell over here that gets flung off to the side. And you can see we actually have the part that is sticking over to the dummies because that is our bullet itself. And if I shoot long ways in the distance, you can see the bullet shooting out from my gun. It's a little hard to see, but maybe if I zoom in enough, you can see it's shooting a projectile. And you'll see that the bullet will stick to certain things like the ground, which is pretty, pretty cool. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video.